On today's show, we're going fishing with a general. Well, not really. He's only a colonel, but he commands a big operation in Minnesota that goes trolling for the troops. We salute Colonel Scott St. Sauber. Look at this one, Ron. Oh, it's a beauty. That is a nice one. Next. Look out, Annie Oakley. There's a new Minnesota hotshot in town. She's a dead eye on a horse and a champion, too. And later, we'll catch up on the latest about a Minnesota bass angler who's competing in the big leagues of fishing. And our Minnesota Bound Classic goes back to the quaint town of Lanesboro, Minnesota, where the Root River trout can almost swim down Main Street. Those stories and more next. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. And our first story is about fishing. As you can see, we're ready to go fishing. It's also about the man who heads up the Minnesota National Guard at Camp Ripley. He likes to fish. He also loves trolling for the troops. Something's happening here. Looks like just another day of fishing on Mille Lacs. All right, Scott, you ready to go? I'm ready, let's go. Ready to fish for sure. But this is no ordinary day on the water for Scott St. Sauver and his father, Jim. So uh, what do you think, Scott, where are we gonna? I think we're gonna go over here off the rocks. Scott has come to Mille Lacs in search of smallmouth bass. Wise man told me fish where the loons do. <laughs> This is not catching, this is fishing. <laughs> yes, absolutely. This is fish on. All right, fish on. Perfect. Nice job, Dad. Yes, nice catch, but Scott also has come to Mille Lacs for another reason. See those guys in the T4 t-shirts? Trolling for troops. On this day, nobody fishing on Mille Lacs knows more about troops than Colonel Scott St. Sauver. Colonel Sauver is the post commander of nearby Camp Ripley and a full-time guardsman since 1999. It's also the largest National Guard facility in the country. It goes everything from individual uh, weapons qualification with their individually signed weapon for a soldier, all the way up to heavy armor, tanks, M1 Abrams tanks, uh, M M2 Bradley fighting vehicles, they're here on the base. The colonel oversees some 800 employees who yearly train thousands of troops and law enforcement personnel. With 35 years of military experience, the colonel has seen and heard it all. And he listened to his fellow soldiers in Iraq. Everything I heard in Iraq all the time, especially the first deployment, was what do you miss about home? Well, it was always family, you know, it was always those things, but it always ended up being, I miss deer season, I, I miss deer camp this year, I missed the fishing open. And so I, I kind of said to myself, I said, when I get back, I want to make sure we do something. That something is an annual fishing event at Camp Ripley the Colonel calls Trolling for Troops. An evening banquet sets the tone, including moments of gratitude to veterans. It's, you know, it's a great event to be able to combine not only just a veteran, but also disabled veterans, along with the current active duty uh, personnel. Nisswa fishing guide Hank Ebert is also a Vietnam vet. It's payback time for all the good things that have happened to me over the years. From the VA and the DAV, American Legion, uh, just community service, I'm paying it back. It means a lot to me, but I'm sure it means a lot more to them. I can fish every day. They cannot. And now it's time for the main event. Time for the invited veterans to go fishing on Mille Lacs, guided by some of Minnesota's top anglers. The camp commander is on the hunt for more smallmouth bass. So he has a way that he can Photoshop a show where he catches them all? You have to understand the editing process. <laughs> awesome. Looks like the commander ordered the smallies to bite. Holy cow. Oh, no. There he goes that way. Finally, I got a fish on. Soon, the commander was in charge again. There's a nice fish. Wow, that's what we're looking for. Oh, 
Nice little smallie. Yep, there he is. Yep, right by the rock. That's a good one too. Well, that's a good fish. Look at this one, Ron. I know, it's a beauty. That is a nice one. Good job. A beauty, yes. Yet the biggest catch of the day belonged to the veterans, trolling for the troops. A day inspired by the commander of Camp Ripley. I think it's super, I really do. We're proud, both mother and I are so proud of him that, that yeah, we, we beam when we talk about him, that's for sure. When we return, she rides like the wind and shoots as straight as Annie Oakley, and she's a winner too. A Minnesota Hot Shot Lass is next. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Kinetico. Open Air Solution. And by Jesse Treble's Safe Basements of Minnesota. Up next, a question. So, you think you're good on horseback? How good are you if you have to hit a target, huh? Well, we found a Minnesota hot shot on horseback, and Laura Shera has the story. Not since Annie Oakley joined Buffalo Bill's Wild West show in 1885 has a female shooter taken the title of Lil Sure Shot until now. Impressive, I would say. <laughs> Meet the modern day dead eye, Jessie Kuka. However, Jessie isn't alone in her quest to conquer the shooting world. She has a shooting partner. This is Hickory. He's my 13 year old registered quarter horse gelding. Hickory and I have won the world two times for mounted shooting and uh, set multiple world records. I've won the Eastern Championships twice. I've won the Central US Championships three times. We've just, we've, we've done well. <laughs> what was once old is new again. Cowboy mounted shooting, as it's technically called, is taking cues from the Old West and placing them in a modern day sport. Mounted shooting, you have 10 targets and they're placed in random patterns. So you carry two single action 45 caliber guns. This is the ammo we use. It's just a black powder blank. All it will do is shoot out black powder. So the burning cinders is basically what will pop the balloon. And I mean, the minute you dry it, it's, it's like uh, you just get this adrenaline rush, I guess, because you're shooting off the back of a horse. And just like Buffalo Bill's Wild West show traveled the countryside, I compete all over the United States. I was just in Texas last week. I've gone to Mississippi, Tennessee. I'll be going to South Dakota in a couple weeks, Vegas. To be able to get your horse to shoot off of them, and it's just kind of that thing like you're in the old Western. Hmm, let's see. I love horses. I like to shoot. All right, Jesse. so I'm gonna give this a try. Let's not put the, the pedal to the metal immediately here. Let's, let's start out slow, we'll work our way up. He's ready. Try to keep your arm nice and straight with your elbow lock. Beginner work. Serious business. Rooster, we might, we might have to just speed it up just a little bit. I know it's a hot day, but. Ah, last one. 
total blast. No pun intended. <laughs> I can now say that I have a whole new level of respect for female sharpshooters of the past and present. As Annie Oakley once said, aim at the high mark and you will hit it. No, not the first time, not the second time, and maybe not the third. But keep on aiming and keep on shooting, for only practice will make you perfect. And finally, you'll hit the bullseye of success. It's just definitely a lot of practice, a lot of time with your horse. You have to have that partnership. That's what it takes. I think it's safe to say that Jesse took Annie's advice to heart. Up next, an update on a Minnesota bass fishing hotshot who now competes in the major leagues of fishing. Stick around for his story. Closed captioning is brought to you by By the Yard. Welcome back. You know, in Minnesota, we all love to fish, mostly walleye, but a lot of folks like to catch bass. But in our next story, we found a Minnesota guy who catches more bass than the rest of us. Travis Frank has the story. Cruising above a maze of milfoil, Andy Young goes to work. You ready, man? Yeah, let's catch some fish. Let's, let's, right, let's, let's get this done. His office, a ranger boat, decked out in fancy logos. His work, outsmarting big bass. That's a decent little Minnetonka milfoil bass, huh? Not great, but not, not bad. Off we go. See you, buddy. Back down into your foil. Andy tours the country, competing against the world's top anglers where big bass equal big bucks. I, I figured I, I might as well just throw down and... Give it a, give yeah, it a shot? Yeah, I ain't gonna, I mean, worst thing I can do is go broke, and I've been broke before, so not a big deal. <laughs> the competition drives him, creating a rush he can find nowhere else, which is why Andy's now riding yeah. an all-time high. Andy Young has won the Bass Pro Shops Bassmaster Central Open. The win qualified him for the Bassmaster Classic. I'm going to the Classic! Yes! The Super Bowl of all fishing tournaments. Yeah, I think it's a dream of every bass fisherman, so I feel very, very fortunate. <laughs> At the Classic, the right bass can make you a millionaire. He just might be a Minnesota legend in the making. No one from Minnesota has ever won a Bassmaster Classic. It's as big as it gets. On Lake Minnetonka, he feels at home, studying the bass and sharpening his skills. You know that somewhere there's, there's a school of fish that's just going nuts right now. You just have to find them, you know? Somebody's catching them. They're always fighting <laughs> somewhere. Well, there's definitely a lot of hard work that it takes, and uh, there probably is some skill involved, but I believe in a little bit of luck, too. <laughs> A work ethic he learned from his dad on the beaches of Hawaii. He'd take me out and we'd wade out onto the reefs and fish with little bamboo fishing poles and catch all these, all these reef fish. But ever since then, I've, it's been a love of mine and I've just been obsessed with fishing. At the age of 10, Andy's dad passed away, but his love for fishing burned strong. He never got to go bass fishing up here with me or anything like that, but yeah. it would have been nice if he did. I'm guessing he'd be pretty proud. I think so, yeah, yeah, probably. Knowing his father is watching brings him a smile. Hey, you know, someone's, someone's looking out for me upstairs, I guess. <laughs> there so, we go, oh, double, 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 oh! Yeah, oh, get yeah him. flip him. Yeah, get him in. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Nice little, nice little flurry, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Andy, that was awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we're right, both in the exact same spot. That's a double, we pulled them both at the same time. Beautiful. And the old RTX. <laughs> okay, nice. <laughs> I like to go out there and, and, and work hard and try to find the fish myself. And if, uh, like I say, if I died today, I'd like to be remembered as the guy that worked hard and, and did it his way. <laughs> exactly why anglers around oh. Minnesota 
will be cheering for Andy Young. Perhaps someday he'll be Minnesota's first millionaire bass master. I'd love to be a millionaire bass fisherman. <laughs> Gotta love that, Lake Minnetonka special. We'll get bigger ones than that though. How sweet that day will be. See ya. Our Minnesota Bound Classic takes us back for a visit to Lanesboro, a quaint country town in the hills of southeast Minnesota, where Main Street and trout fishing are almost one in the same. Stay with us. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Grand Rapids Tourism. Vino in the Valley, Maui Jim Sunglasses, and by Tracker Boats. Up next, our Minnesota Bound Classic this week goes to a quaint little town in southeast Minnesota called Lanesboro. Why, it's so busy on Main Street, but it's also so close to trout fishing. What to do? Lanesboro, population 858, and once a dying farm town, but no more. Main Street is busy with peddlers and paddlers, all in a flashback of Americana that clops back into time. So what exercised the ghost of Lanesboro? Well, it was Mother Nature. The town folk rediscovered the Root River, its beauty, and its fun. Suddenly, dying Lanesboro was one of America's top main streets in one of America's top outdoor towns. I'm so wonder, Shane Bay, Hoyte. Be right there, sir. The man behind the menu, the counter, and the music is R. R. Fabian celebrates every day in his place called Das Wurst Haus. Here, a little music is served with a daily menu of homemade food, everything from root beer to mustard. When I serve a guy a wiener, I like to give him a wiener, not one of these that look like a pencil, right? Mm -hmm. To R. the rebirth of Lanesboro is no secret. We got the river here, we got the bike trail, you know, we got the biggest uh, trout hatchery in the state here, you know, and, and we got the scenery. So it's just a uh, an automatic, you know, for... You forgot one thing. You got the music. <laughs> <laughs> and that cowboy that loved you so... Hey! <laughs> An outdoor town wouldn't be complete without a fish hatchery nearby. Built in 1926, Minnesota's largest trout hatchery is fed by an endless supply of 48-degree water percolating through the limestone. Trout like it cool at 5,000 gallons a minute. Right now we're raising brown trout and rainbow trout. Uh, we produce about 1.2 million fish a year, which equates out to about 100,000 pounds of fish that actually get stocked. So our traffic through the hatchery has increased a lot, but uh, we don't mind. Uh, people are welcome to come out and look around, see what we're doing. While new visitors are discovering Lanesboro, there's lots about the town that hasn't changed, starting with the local folk. Back in 1982, Mrs. B's was the first and only bed and breakfast in town. Today, there are 12 B&Bs. This is an owner-operator type town. It's not an investor town. Uh, people are here to live and to work their own businesses. And I think as long as we do that, we'll become real. So that's Lanesboro today. Real folks in a real town and real country where they really sing real music. Ah, Lanesboro. Hard to believe it once we're just a quiet little farm town, huh? Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Sher, and of course, always the star of the show. Here's the captain of my boat. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com. Share your stories on the Minnesota Bound Facebook page under the Share Your Story tab.